Um, this is the Northampton Conservation Commission uh, for the uh, 9th of February, uh, 2023. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We specifically are concerned with the aid interests defined in the Wetlands Protection Act and the City Wetlands Ordinance. Our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask that the public limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today, we have no uh, public hearings, but we have a uh, request for a certificate of compliance, a couple of those, and a uh, request for a, a study about uh, lichens. So that uh, interested to hear more about that. Um, uh, first would be an announcement that the meeting is being recorded and to see if there's any general public comment uh, that does not have to do with any specific case before us. If not, uh, uh, approval of minutes, Sarah, not any minutes this week, right? No, not this time. Okay. Uh, so, first item, uh, request for a lichen study. Thank you for putting me right at the beginning of your meeting. I appreciate that. For sure. Um, did you receive the the documents that I uh, yes. gave Sarah? Okay, great. Um, well, so as it says in there, um, what we're hoping to do, that's me and Devora, who's listening in here, and, um, and also Laurie Sanders. Um, we would like to uh, make a voucher collection of lichens in Northampton and submit it to the Farlow Herbarium. Well, it's the New England Botanical Society has sort of a, um, a sub herbarium within the Farlow Herbarium, which is the one at Harvard. Um, and um, I thought the conservation areas would be the best place to start because they're natural. There's a lot of trees there, more um, different habitats. Um, so, um, the reason I chose Northampton is simply because I live here and it's easy to access and get to the places. Um, I've never done a collection like this before, um, but this, um, seems like a good place to start. And, uh, I'm really excited to be able to submit these specimens to the herbarium because I've, I've met the people there and, um, I've seen the website and, um, there's a website called lichenportal.org that has all the herbaria across the world all linked together um, and you can get data from any of them. It's really cool. Um, uh, I got excited, really, really excited about lichens when I um, I found a very rare lichen um, this uh, in the spring of 2022. It was growing along a river in, um, in Worthington along the, uh, the Westfield and it was aquatic, which is really, really rare for a lichen. And I didn't even know it was a lichen at first. I thought it was an algae. But after a lot of sleuthing um, and consulting with people, it turns out it was this really interesting lichen that has only been found maybe once before in Massachusetts. So that really lit the fire even more. Um, and I've been really just, I don't know why, obsessed with lichens now. Um, and <laughs> it's just it, it's just so interesting. They're very diverse in their forms and in their type of reproduction. They re can reproduce in about six different ways. Um, and you look at them under a microscope and under a, under a um, dissecting scope and you do chemical tests on them. And um, it's just, it's so interesting. Um, and they are really useful ecologically um, in terms of indicators. Um, they can indicate air pollution levels, and also um, they're used as indicators for climate change, for example, on alpine summits and boreal areas. Um, there's some lichens that are just specialized for those places. Um, and so, yeah, what we would like to do is, um, you know, find the different kinds of habitats on the conservation areas and go to all the different habitats and see what different types of lichens might be in the different places. And then we would just collect a small sample of each one and we uh, put it in a packet 
and label it with all the information and identify it um, and then um, put it in the freezer to kill any kind of bugs that are on it. And then um, take it in eventually, eventually take it to the herbarium where they will um, verify our IDs. Um, and I'm working with people there who can help, you know, help with that. Okay. Anything that I don't know. So um, I don't know when we would be finished. Um, I'm not expecting it to drag out for years and years, but it might be a year or two, maybe. Um, yeah, do you have any questions? I, I've sort of always assumed that uh, lichen were a very primitive, a very early uh, vegetative life form uh, that, you know, a couple of billion years ago when things were first getting started, that yeah. lichens were among that. Is that true? I, I have no idea why I, I would assume that true. other than the fact that they're little. But. Yeah, I know they're definitely early in terms of succession. You know, they're the first things that oh. grow on rocks um, or on, the, on bare soil. Um, and, and then they sort of form the basis for other things to grow there. Um, I think ecologically, I mean, I, I think um, evolutionarily that they're quite primitive. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Our railroad has been actually. using lichen for years. Who? The scenery. Yeah. Wait, who, who did you say has been using it? Model railroaders have been using oh, lichen. Oh, yeah, 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 for yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those trees, the little bushes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's the right. Reindeer that's lichen. Cool. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, Molly, I, I know Lori Sanders has mentioned uh, the various types of lichens that she was really sort of surprised to find on headstones in the Bridge Street Cemetery. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to do a walk there in the spring. Um, oh, great. Yeah. I'll do a walk. Um, she and I will do it together. She'll focus on the history of the people underground, and I will focus on the lichens that are on the, on the gravestones. That should be cool. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've there, had various requests over the years um, from well-meaning people who want to clean the gravestones and the oh. lichens were one of the reasons that that's really discouraged. Yeah, yeah. I would never scrape a lichen off a gravestone, but I would maybe photograph it or something like that. Is this going to generate some kind of a report? Well, um, I think the report would mostly just consist of the list of the lichens that I found and maybe a, a mention of which ones were the really common ones and which ones were were less common, or even if we found one that was rare, you know, we would point that out, um, you know, and list which conservation area it was found in. Um, um, would it, would it but I'm not photos too. Um, I will photos. be. Yep, I will be yeah. taking photos. Yep, so that could be part of it too. Mm -hmm. Would be uh, be an interesting uh, thing to send a mission when you're done. Yes, yes, definitely. This would yeah, be a sort of a, a field guide to uh, yep. lichens in North right. Africa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it wouldn't be a guide to like explain how to identify them, but it mm -hmm. could be a like a photographic, um, what would you call it? Collection, a photographic collection that, of lichens of Northampton. That would be, that would be cool and pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And just to, before we, as a commission say, okay, our, our obligatory responsibilities in your, uh, you say it's very small samples, um, mm -hmm. not going to be disruptive. Of, no, uh, here's some examples. Like, um, here's here's a packet. Here's a kind of packet that we put them in. Hold on. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that. So it's be a, a couple inches square or something. And the lichen, not here's the lichen. Square, but... Uh huh. Right. Oh. That's a typical piece. Like that's the stuff the on the rocks in yeah. my backyard. Exactly right. That's the size we would aim for. Yeah. Um, here's another one. This one is really, really common. Yeah. Um, but that's that's sort of typical of the size we would try to get if possible. Some of them are don't even come that big. Some of them are no bigger than a centimeter across for the whole the whole um, phallus, which is the, the individual. Um, so they're not always this big, but that's about as big as they would get. Is there an existing uh, uh, website like you can with many other plants 
where you can take a photo and say, what is this? And uh, it'll it'll tell you. Yeah, iNaturalist will do that. Yep. iNaturalist will? Okay. iNaturalist I works that. for lichens. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, good. Yeah. Because I've got some some facet in, in uh, a house we have in for the woods in Vermont. Um, there's, it looks like a fascinating little forest of trees and so forth, but you have to zoom in at this level because the whole thing is not more than an inch and a half high. But Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, you really have to have a macro lens um, right. for a lot of these. Great, great. I naturalist. Terrific. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion or questions from the uh, commission? Uh, Sarah, you need an official motion and a vote? Yes, that would be great. Someone want to make a motion to approve the study of lichens in Northampton. So moved. Moved. so moved by Second. David, second by Jen. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor, we need a roll call, Sarah. I just wanted to say it's a really cool project. I don't have any questions, yeah, really. but I'm excited that you guys are doing it. Thank you, Jen. I Thank you. It's great. All right, so uh, roll call vote for support of this exciting project. Jen? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Terrific. Yeah. Look forward to seeing no, more you. about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I look forward to um to submitting um maybe I'll you know send some progress reports along the way. Oh good. That'd be great. Um in, in terms of the like logistics though, um could one of you sign the sign that form and either right. You know, yeah, I can I can sign that as the agent, Molly. I'll get that back. Oh, great. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm really, we, we are both, like me and Devorah are so excited to start this. We can hardly hold it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. Thank you guys for doing what you do. <laughs> Some important work. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, now, next topic, Certificate of Compliance, uh, Glendale Road. You okay, sent so, us uh, your staff report, Sarah. You want to do a little summary? Sure. So um, if anybody remembers approving the Wagon Trails uh, dog park on Glendale Road, uh, this also included the development of three house lots that were close right. to Glendale Road. Um, so th those didn't require any wetlands review on their own. Uh, they were well outside of any jurisdictional areas or buffer zones, but the dog park project as a whole required an order of conditions for work that was being done. And the order is showing up in the chain of title for those three lots um, since see. it was carved off from that original parcel. And although the request was only made for the house lots, uh, the, the order is long expired and the work never commenced. So it would be cleaner just to close out the whole thing and indicate that it was invalid. Uh, so which way do we do it? Just say, close it out, work never started? Or uh, so it, to... the box to check is invalid order of conditions, which is okay. sort of a misleading term the DEP uses. Yeah. But, um, in, invalid work never began. And so if anybody ever des does decide to resurrect that dog park in that location, they have to come back to us. They would, uh, and they would have to anyway. So this, uh, you know, this doesn't change anything about the original permit. It's just the official checkbox that clears everything out of the registry of deeds. So we'll we'll save a vote for the commission in the future. Good. Uh, someone want to make a motion to uh, grant that checking of the invalid box on a certificate of compliance form? Uh, if that's quite the correct way to phrase the uh, motion, but yeah. someone want to make that motion? Sure. sure. So moved. Oh, <laughs> I'll second. Jen moved it. All right. Jen seconded. Uh, further discussion? If not, all in favor? Roll call. All right. Jen? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. You know me. It's got to do with Cardinal Way. Right, well, that's next Cardinal Way. What? On my uh, stuff you sent there was something about us. Yeah, that's the next one. Oh, that's the next one. I didn't the see second the second certificate two. of compliance. That's not the one. Or, uh, 71 Cardinal Way. Um, and I saw the as built or the letter about the as built plan. Yeah. Um, Want to give a verbal summary on that, Sarah? 
Sure. So this order uh, was for the relocation of a driveway within the buffer zone on Cardinal Way, um, not related to the Cardinal Way development on its own. This house predated the uh, um, the subdivision. So a uh, an as built was provided. It's not quite a one-to-one -one match with what was permitted, but the shift was not uh, within the buffer zone or any ju jurisdictional areas. Um, you know, if it had the had the driveway removal been within the buffer zone, this clearly wouldn't qualify for a certificate uh -huh. of compliance, but because it's not, you know, there's the commission doesn't really have an opportunity to say that what was done wasn't wasn't in accordance with the plan, but it is kind of a shame that the, the order wasn't specific enough to require some something else within the buffer zone. And unfortunately, this was the only set of minutes I've never been able to locate. I don't know where they are. I don't know what happened to them. So I, uh. I don't know what the uh, framework of the commission's discussion was, but you know, otherwise, except for the surface of the driveway, it seems to have been, been done as proposed for that really small area that exists within the buffer zone. All right. So there's uh, no reason for us not to uh, agree to, to grant a certificate of compliance. That... So if someone want to make a motion to grant a certificate of compliance for uh, uh, this old order of um, conditions. Sure. What was it. the year anyway? Sarah, what, what uh, was 2009? That? Nine, yeah. yeah. So not as old as some that we've seen, but you know, certainly right. not recent. I'm trying to think if I was yet on the commission then. Uh, I think that's about the time I started. So I might've actually seen this at that point. All right. Um, Randy made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by David. Further discussion? If not all in favor, Sarah? Done? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous. And then in, in other items unforeseen, um, we might want to start thinking about options for coming back to non-remote meetings if necessary. The emergency uh, order provision that allows for fully remote meetings expires in March, and no one has any sense whether the the, uh, the new governor will extend that or not. Mm -hmm. um, so we we do have you know we could meet fully in person. We could do um, we could do hybrid meetings. You know the city doesn't have any official rules or or guidance about what to do. City council is thinking about how they want to meet moving forward. They're still fully remote, um, but you know, just to bring it up and. Think about what we want to do moving forward. Um, I I sort of miss. Uh, I've almost forgotten what it's like to meet in person, but I sort of miss meeting in person. Mm -hmm. um, so to the extent and having had COVID and been fully vaxxed and all that stuff, I'm not particularly worried in the fairly large open space of a, a, a meeting room uh, that there's going to be a whole lot of risk. So uh, and. The uh, the one thing that is, I've I've seen it tried with various groups, uh, hybrid meetings, and unless you have a really good video system on the wall, it's it doesn't work that well. It, it's kind yeah. of the worst of both, rather than being okay. But mm -hmm. the meeting room does have that big screen, so it might it might work. I don't know. It, it um, has a big screen. Um, it's definitely improved since when the commission was meeting there in person, um, but in, the hybrid meetings definitely propose, it definitely presents some challenges. The planning board has been experimenting with a few different ways to do them and in public comment is difficult. It's difficult for staff to potentially try and run the, what amounts to two meetings at the same time if yes, it's right. correctly. Um, but we're, we're trying to figure out a way to do it that really makes sense for everyone. I mean, the public has made it clear that being able to participate from Zoom has been really good and um, increases participation. But you know, doing it in the same format that you would have for an in-person meeting doesn't really make sense. Right, right. Um, so um, 
What so we don't need to decide any, anything at this point, but I, I just wanted to bring it up. You know, Mace, Mace again, we, we don't the, know what they'll decide at the this The old time. people, the old and vulnerable people, Mason and I. Are you okay with that, Mace? That's okay with me. I, I miss the one-on-one -on -one with the consultants. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being in the room, watching the body language and the dynamic between the the property owner and the consultant and all that kind of stuff. So yes, I think. Marsh sounds good because uh, then I'll have, you know, a vehicle available right now. Barb's with the, doing the taxes. So this is working out good. Good. Well, so uh, everybody else okay with yeah. meeting in person? Yeah, when we can? I'm fine with that. Okay. We might want to consider, I mean, in person for our normal meetings. And then if we have anything that is going to have a high degree of public involvement, consider. Yes. But hybrid then. I agree. Rather than trying to do hybrid all the time, because mm -hmm. I agree that tends to be the worst of, of both. Yeah. And, you know, we could do a, a scenario where the public could watch on Zoom live at home, but wouldn't necessarily be able to participate unless they were in the room. You know, and again, we have no idea what the state's going to do or what might be required. Right. Okay. It's hard to say. But, you know, I, it, under the current time frame, it, it would be the middle of March. So I guess we we could plan on remote until then, and then see what happens after that. Good. Let's do that. that. And uh, follow up on a couple of other things. One is that uh, uh, Chief Casper got back to me about they have hired now both the full and the part time animal control officer, and right now uh, th that person whose name I'm blocking on right now. Um, and, was, and Bob Zimmerman and, and I are trying to find a time um, to talk together about what might be um, an optimum use. How do, for the fewest hours, how do you have the greatest impact, uh, at least at Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area? Um, and so that'll be a start um, on taking the, the dog issue at, at uh, Fitzgerald Lake, um, a, a step towards some kind of re resolution. Um, also, Jen, I'm, uh, I, I, I have volunteered to uh, take your place on the uh, um, community preservation um, commission and, or it's a committee actually, isn't that, that, is that the correct title? Not a commission, it's a committee. But um, where, where in the annual cycle does that stand right now? Um, we are about to do the spring round, which I've agreed to stay through happily. Yep. Um, and then because you said that you're on another committee that it will be a little easier for you sort of yes. starting Come in the July, fall. it would be easy. Yeah. Relatively, yeah. yes, I'm le leaving the board at Tapestry Health Systems. Uh, yeah, at the end so, of that's, the year, so that was the timing I was planning on. And that's great. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Perfect. And and Randy, are you still feeling the need to rotate off? And no, 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 no. I, I, I re-upped. Um, you re-upped. Yeah, okay, I was, great. I was Glad pretty happy through. I mean, last month, um, but because Sarah hadn't replaced me at that point, <laughs> um, I filled out all the forms, did my uh, appropriate online tests, and and uh, I'm up again awesome. for three more years. Awesome. Right. Very glad to hear. Thank you. Um, all right, and uh, lastly, I've asked Mason to, uh, if if indeed we have something on the agenda for two weeks from now, um, to uh, as, be as this. vice chair to to hand, take the gavel um, on the twenty third, uh, because I'm going to be in the Virgin Islands, and I don't know um, if you can so uh, sure you don't I'm just dial I'm doing with that. Dog, dog control. <laughs> 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 Who's that holding the dog? I have no idea, but I, <laughs> I, I saw this picture. I just, oh, I got to put it in, and bring it up that, to a do dog meeting. Jen, who is that? Yeah. <laughs> My dog, <laughs> Elephant. <laughs> Elephant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a great name for a dog. My son, my nine-year-old named her, obviously. She goes by <laughs> Ellie mostly, but her okay. name is- Well, Ellie's a good- Yeah. She probably understands yeah. Ellie better than Elephant, but- This is her witching yeah, well, hour where she's always one inch from me at all times. <laughs> <laughs> well, as it happens, um, last week, uh, Sally went with her cousin, uh, Peter, uh, who got divorced after 28 years, I guess, and moved from Buffalo to Northampton. Mm -hmm. 
a nice guy I've known for 45 years or so. And um, he went out looking for a dog and Sally said, I'll go with you. He didn't get a dog, but we did. Um, so <laughs> now we have two, um, including the, the, I got to name the, the, the puppy five months old. Um, she has white toes, so she, her name is Tozy. Um, but uh, Amazing. now we're, we're in the middle of uh, deworming, kennel cough, uh, healing, and getting all of this done before dropping her off at the kennel because we're going to the Caribbean. But uh, yep. yeah, so, uh, <laughs> we are in the midst of puppy work right now. Yeah. So. Can't wait to take her out and let her run around wild at Fitzgerald Lake. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just kidding, just kidding. Guy must have been amazed to see uh, ground without six feet of snow on it. it. Came from Buffalo. Yes. Well, he's he's very happy to be in Northampton. He he's, he has a, 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 a he's sixty years old, and um, uh, the, he's a he's got a girlfriend who works in Florence, and um, she's a lawyer and a, a child advocate, and. So he, that's part of what made it feel right to him to uh, okay. be right here in Northampton. And he's actually living diagonally across the street from Sally and my first house uh, uh, 43 years ago that we bought. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, uh, uh, it's good to have him around and I trust he will eventually get a dog of his own, but until then he can come <laughs> over and visit us whenever he wants. <laughs> all right, uh, well, good to see you all. and. Uh, I'll take pictures and uh, if uh, if I can get an internet connection, send a couple from uh, St. John. Uh, anything else before we close up? That's what Mason will be taking the, the gavel for that next meeting on the 23rd, if there is one. Yeah, that, there are a few items for that one. So we, okay. we definitely will meet. All right, good to have a brief meeting. Uh, we'll probably at some point have large contentious table pounding public meetings again, but we haven't had any of those for a while. So um, mention hunting. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get that. Right, it'll come back yeah. at some point. All right. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye now. Bye. Bye.